Okay, so in the previous uh, videos, we learned how to use cadence. We learned how to extract the GM and R out of a transistor to design a common source amplifier. Then we use the 45 nanometer technology node uh, generic pre PDK from Cadence to design a self-biased common source amplifier. We did the simulation, we did hand calculation, we understand how it works, and we even try to do the layout, but the lay layout is too much, so I'm not going to show you, right? I just show you how to do a connection in principle, you can connect that. Now then, what we have done is that we that is a gen generic uh, PDK. It cannot be fabricated. So we use a TSMC 65 nanometer process to uh, take out a chip, right? Of course, we are not going to uh, use uh, the whole chip for the common source amplifier. We only have a part to do that. And then the rest was for other purpose for my research, right? So what so how does it look like so in the next class you are going to see the fabricated die and this is the die here right so if i type k you type, try to type k right and then you can measure the size of the device you see that it is about 1000 micron uh, y and then One thousand micron uh, tall, so it is a one millimeter by one millimeter, one millimeter square die, right? It's very tiny, but here we put in a lot of stuff. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is that this uh, we design another common source amplifier, also self bias by putting into this location. Okay, so let me zoom in again. Do you remember how to zoom? First, I can move it. I use the arrow key to shift to the right and then control Z, right? Then I can zoom in. Now, it is pretty, pretty messy because we have done something called dummy filling, right? This dummy filling are important when they do the so-called chemical mechanical process uh, uh, pol polishing. So we can ignore that, right? But uh, from here, let me turn off the dummy layer so that uh, actually it's not easy to turn off. There are too many dummy layers. Yeah, so the, there are too many I'm not going to turn off, right? But uh, let me zoom out so it will be easier to see. Uh, control uh, Shift Z, right? It's a little bit slow. Uh, I say it wrong again, it should be shift Z instead of control shift Z. So uh, I'm going to call, do control F so I can see my cell. Do you see this cell? Right. And then I'm going to right click and then I will say descend edit. In that case, I will see my uh, the, the structure that I use to uh, for the common source amplifier. Now you see that I have something called pet here. Let me zoom in and then you can take a look. These are just the connection that connects from the top metal to the bottom metal, right? So let me do shift F. Now then you can see this. So what are we doing here? Let me draw, draw it so you know what we are doing. As I said earlier, in, your, in the silicon, Right, this is silicon. At the bottom, we have all the transistor, maybe like this. This is the gate, this is the source, this is the drain. Eventually, you need to connect her to the outside world, right? And I told you that we have different layer. We have the outside isolation, and then we have a layer which can be the metal. But this metal uh, is not necessarily connector, right? This can be metal one. And then we have another oxide layer to isolate them. And then we may have another layer, maybe uh, metal two, right? And then we have isolation. And this can go to top level, let's say metal 11, right? So that is what the pet doing, right? So it, it has a top level metal. This is very big, right? It's about 75 micron. You can barely see with your eye. 
and we're going to probe it. And then you will open a via, and then it's connect to the next level, right? All the way, maybe to metal two, right? Uh, of course, I skip the metal. It should be go to via 11, and then via, and then metal 10, and then via uh, 10, and then metal nine, right? And this one keep going down, and then this is metal one, right? And then I might have this metal one connected everywhere, have a nine, and then here it might then have an opening to connect to the gate. Do you see that? This is the cross section when we cut the die. And I am going to probe, I'm going to electrically contact the top, right? By probing at the top of this pad. And then the electrical signal will flow from here to here. And that is what we are seeing. Let's take a look at this again, right? So for example, I can like turn off everything then you don't see anything, right? And now I'm going to uh, look at the uh, terminal metal, right? Uh, right, and then metal nine. This is dummy, however, I should look at this metal nine draw. So we have this lot of structure have metal nine, and then we add the wheel to connect them to metal eight. Yeah. Yeah, and then the metal eight will connect to uh, metal seven, right? So if I turn this off, then it will be easier to see, right? So this is metal seven. Then we have metal six. Then I'm going to remove metal seven and I connect metal five, right? And then metal four, remove metal five. Then I see metal three, remove metal four, and then I see metal two. Right, and then you may say I don't see the wheel because the wheel are very small. Let's take a look. For example, I go to metal one. Okay, I turn on metal one. Uh, not this one should be metal one draw, right? And then I go to do control Z, right? Remember control C and then move them, keep moving, right? And then I am going to turn on wheel one. Now, do you see that this wheel are the hole that connecting the Metal 2 to metal 1. Metal 1 is just like the first four in your building. Metal 2 is the second four. They are not connected. How do you connect them? You make some stairs. The wheel are just like the stairs connect the metal 2 to metal 1. Okay? So I go, I'm going to go out, right? And then now I will show you that one of them is connected to here. This is the 9 uh, that... Uh, connects to the transistor and this is the uh, we connect it by metal one okay so let me show everything now you will see that we connect the top to the common source amplifier so for the whole structure you're going to see it's pretty large let's take a look how large is our common source amplifier i press k right and then i try to measure the height is about 500 micron. The width is about, uh, press K. The width is about 75 micron, right? Let's do a math. What, how many can I put in the die? It's about 1000 times 1000. This is the size of the die divided by 500 divided by 75. I can put about, let's say, 26 common source amplifier. How much does it cost? It costs about 6,000 to take out the chip. Looks like very expensive. However, we can get 100 dies, right? I'm going to show you in the experiment later. You will see we have 100 identical dies and they do it at the same time, okay? They fabricate it at the same time. And then we can have 26 of them so I divide by the 26 again. So each common source amplifier, including the transistor, the resistor, the pad is only 2.3 US dollar. Now this is really not expensive. 65 nanometer technology is an advanced technology. And why our layout is so large? The main reason is because we're using the pad we need to probe them. Later, we're going to have a probe to probe them. If this is a fully integrated system, you don't need this pad because the common source amplifier is connected to other circuit. So here, at least you can reduce the size by half. 
You only have about one US dollar. You get the common source amplifier. And can we further reduce it? And actually, we can. The reason it is so big is not because of the transistor. Here is the place where we form the serpentine structure for the resistor. And also, we offer the resistor with the capacitor because the capacitor at high level, they are not going to connect to each other. Let me show you why, what I mean here. This is because, as we said earlier, you have a metal on top. I'm using the generic one, right? Metal 11 and connect to metal 10 and you have the oxide here. This one form a capacitor, right? Right. This one form a capacitor, right? This is a capacitor, a C, right? But this is metal 10. It's just like the 11, 10, 4 of your building. Great. Underneath, I still can have my poly. Do you remember I say that the poly is on top of all side, right? So I still can form my poly. If I make it 3D wheel, it will be something like this. At the bottom, this is the poly layer. And even on top of it, we still have the isolation oxide and then we have metal one right and here there's many layers so they are not connecting each other that's why they put them together right so they are not going to short with each other so as a result i have my capacitor and also the uh, resistor overlap to save the area and then we connect them and as a result you will see this layout in the die you are going to probe them.